Hey everyone, I'm Instructor Brooks, and in today's lesson, we're going to learn the passively insufficient position for the hamstring muscles. We're also going to show you a stretch that you can do on your own without having someone else there. So if you're ready to learn something, let's go. All right, everyone, this is Megs, and she's going to allow us to put her hamstring in the passively insufficient position. Hey, Remember, though, the short head of the bicep femoris does not cross two joints. It only crosses the knee. So go ahead and lay supine for me. So the rest of the hamstrings are going to cross the hip and the knee. So they extend the hip, so we're going to flex the hip as much as we can. So the hip is now flexed to its firm end feel. And then if I try to extend the knee because the hamstrings also flex the knee, the reason she can't get full extension here is due to the passive insufficiency of the hamstrings. So if I want her to achieve uh, neutral extension here, I need to get rid of some of that hip flexion. And that allows me now to get that knee into full extension, but then I've lost the hip flexion. And that's the battle you're constantly playing when you have passively insufficiency muscles or muscles that can be passively insufficient and the hamstring is a great muscle to demonstrate that concept. So if I wanna get uh, more hip flexion, I gotta relax that knee, flex that hip more, but now I'm losing that extension. So hip flexion and knee extension combined in any fashion are going to give you the hamstrings passively insufficient position. Thank you, Megan. All right, guys, down in the gym, I'm gonna show you how you can stretch the hamstrings on your own. So I like it doing the leg through the doorway. So I'm stretching my right hamstring. So I have my heel on the wall. I can activate my quads to get full knee extension. And then my hip is easily flexing. The reason I like this position is because it allows me to maintain a neutral spine and that any increase in this is going to be because of my hamstrings actually increasing flexibility, not my back. So I'll show you what I don't like here in just a sec, but this is a great stretch. And you can just hang out, look at your phone, look at the ceiling, take a nap, get a nice good hamstring stretch. Now, the books are gonna tell you to go at least 90 seconds holding this, but ideally you're gonna to wanna to do it longer if you wanna actually increase and allow that muscle to become more flexible. I have other videos that talk about range of motion where I discuss you know, my thoughts on the parameters and static stretching in general, but the most successful way to increase range of motion is a consistent stretching program, regardless of the type of stretching you do. So this is my favorite position. I'm going to show you why I don't like this. Because as I lean forward, if I get farther, it's probably because I'm flexing in my lumbar spine. So we don't want to do that because that's terrible for our low back. So best way, remember, foot you're not stretching through the wall, get your other foot up there and just take a nice little nap. And there you go, let yourself stretch for the hamstrings. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post in the comments below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. That's gonna help this channel grow and it's gonna help you grow by becoming a part of our community of knowledge seekers. And smash that like button so that I know that the video was helpful. And if you click the bell, you're gonna get notifications on our most recent uploads so you can follow us live, which is one of the best ways to continually grow your understanding. And if you got all those things taken care of, then just have an awesome day. And remember, knowledge is power.